Oh, man. <laughs> How are we feeling today? We're good? Uh, I'm going to pray one more time, and then I'll just kind of let you know where we're going to go today and what's going down. So, Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to come. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. So, Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I bind all fatigue. I bind every distracting spirit, everything that would try to block your people's receptivity to what you want to do today. Father, we bless you. We bless your work, Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you're doing, God. <laughs> In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> so I am not shocked by what's going on over there. And I will, I'll give you, some, give you all some context. So um, for starters, I'll just say this because we might be seeing this a, a little bit, this service across the room. Um, when, when the glory of God comes in and touches a person, sometimes we react, our physical bodies will react in different ways, depending on what the Lord's doing. You can see this throughout scripture. Um, when a prophet, for example, is commissioned and he encounters the presence of the Lord, that's very rarely a dignified moment in scripture. Uh, there's you know, this exclamation, even of Jeremiah, he sees the Lord and all that can come out of him. He sort of like falls to his knees and all that comes out is, woe is me, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell amongst a people of unclean lips. Even you see it in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus uh, is about to be arrested. These Roman soldiers, granted these Roman soldiers, these people who do not know Yahweh, these people who do not know God or who he is, Jesus says, I am, he declares the name, he declares the name of God. And what scripture tells us is that in that moment, all of these people draw back and fall down because we like to really sanitize scripture. We like to think they're like, oh, this is a very unique holy moment. Give me a minute, Jesus. I know we're about to arrest you, but like these people had no idea what he was saying. These people grew up worshiping the Greco-Roman gods, they grew up worshiping Jupiter, they grew up worshiping all of these other things. So when Jesus says, I am, their response in that moment is not this collected, dignified, like, oh, I'm thinking I, it would be appropriate to bow now. That's not what's happening. The glory of God is being declared to them and they have a physical reaction to the presence of God in the moment. Are we tracking? Okay. This might make some of you uncomfortable, and that is okay. I am also uncomfortable. <laughs> um, to give you, I'll, I'll share a little bit about what the Lord told me about today and with service, and then I'm just going to start sharing testimonies, okay? Um, and again, all this will start to make more sense. So um, I spend a good amount of time praying before I ever get up here to speak, as is appropriate, right? Um, how many of you have a relationship with the Lord where he, to, for lack of a better phrase or term, um, he, he will kind of sass you and he's unapologetic about it? <laughs> yeah. Those of you who are chuckling know exactly what I'm talking about. But I, I went to the Lord and I was praying, okay, God, I know what series we're in. I know where we're going and, you know, what do you want me to say? He spoke very clearly uh, to my heart and he said, I will be ministering to my people today. And if I need your help, I will ask for it. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, and I'm, I'm still, you know, I still put myself before the Lord that I don't take that just to, to put some of you at ease. I don't take that as license to like, well, I don't have to prepare. I don't have to do anything, whatever. Um, but this is not my church. This is not Sean's church. And I'll put it this way as well. Uh, if the God that you worship never challenges you and never makes you uncomfortable, he probably looks a little bit too much like you to be God. <laughs> 
if the God you worship never makes you uncomfortable and never challenges you, he probably looks a little bit too much like you to be God. Yeah? I'm okay with letting that one sink in a little bit. So, uh, testimony time. And then we'll just see where the Lord wants to take this. Um, so how many of you guys know, this is probably an easier touch point, Joanne Moody. She's come through here several times. Um, so recently a group of us, I should say me, uh, my wife, and then can I have my fire starters friends raise your hands so that people can all see you? So this is not all of them, but I also help lead a, uh, I don't even know what to call it. We don't even know what to call it. It's not a home group. It's a meeting. <laughs> on first and third Fridays, and that's all my leadership team, minus a few people. Um, and we went to this conference called Voice of the Apostles. And the reason I mentioned Joanne Moody is because some of you might recognize the name of that conference, Voice of the Apostles. That's the conference where Joanne Moody was healed. Um, from, for those of you who don't know her, she had 14 years of, deb of debilitating nerve damage uh, in her pelvis. She had had tons of surgeries. She was on all kinds of narcotics. She goes to this conference, and I'm short-cutting a ton of story here, but she goes to this conference. She gets completely healed. And to this day, she's still, and now she's traveling around the world, preaching the gospel, praying for the sick. Signs and wonders are happening. God is getting glorified. So I, my wife and I, we took a big group of these people who are, were leading something with two voices of the apostles. Um, and we still don't fully have words for everything that God did. Um, God touched each and every single person in a, in a dramatic way. Just for example, I'll share, my, my teams, we've shared all these testimonies amongst each other, so I'll share a few, um, and then I'll actually end with a testimony um, from my wife. She said, I don't want to get up on stage today, and that's fine. She gave me permission to share her story. <laughs> but, um, gosh, there were so many things. So, um, just one touch point. Izzy, can you wave your hand so that people can see you? So um, that's Izzy. Everybody say hi, Izzy. <laughs> so um, is it, I mean, yeah, cool. So, so uh, part of Izzy's story, at least what happened with her physically, how the Lord touched her body, um, she was pushed off of a play structure when she was pretty young. And that resulted in a break in her nose um, to the point where she could not really breathe through her nose. She could a little bit, um, not so much when she was exercising. She received prayer uh, throughout the week for that injury. And throughout the week, she could actually, her nose was getting a little sore, but it was because she could actually begin to feel the bones in her nose moving and straightening out. And by the time that she got home, uh, she waited even a couple of days to tell our team this testimony because she was testing it out. Um, she had gone on several runs since she had gotten home and before where she could not breathe through her nose, she was able to breathe through her nose the entire time while she was running. In another story, um, Janelle, so she... This is already, these testimonies are already out there. We actually record our fire starters meetings, and so all of these were shared. Um, just to share a little bit of it. Um, how many of you guys have been, I'll just ask, start it this way. How many of you guys have been in different revival meetings, different atmospheres where people are shaking, laughing, doing all of that? It's okay if you haven't, but how many of you? Um, and now, how many of you, if you're honest with yourself, you get a little bit judgy when that stuff starts happening? Okay. As do I at different points. Um, what the Lord has consistently challenged me on, though, is I actually don't know what he's doing with that person, and I don't know what's going on in their heart while that's happening. I've talked with plenty of people who have had similar manifestations happen where they start laughing. It seems disruptive. People are like, what are you doing? This is weird. I don't get it. But I've talked with plenty of people who, after they have those encounters, you would be surprised the number of them that have had a struggle with depression or anxiety or something leading up to that moment. The Lord touches them. They start manifesting. And all that means manifest is to make obvious. That's the definition of that word. 
So the Holy Spirit starts moving on them. They react in that way. And they actually are getting set free from depression and anxiety in that moment. So part of Janelle's story uh, is Janelle is kind of your, she is like the definition of I am woman, hear me roar, if I can put it that way. She is, she's strong, she's capable, um, and she, get, she takes care of business very quickly. So when we're in these series of meetings and over the course of this week that we're at this conference, the Lord starts touching her, ministering to her spirit, and as that's happening, her body starts reacting. So she's you know, bending over, crunches. Some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And for her, here's what the Lord was doing in her heart in that moment. Um, and again, we've talked about all of this. She shared this testimony, so we're good there. Um, Janelle, what, what can sometimes come in with the, I know how to take care of business and I can get stuff done and I can take care of myself. What can come in on the back end of that is this lie that says, I do not need anybody and I have to maintain appearances because I need people to know that I don't need them. Am I tipping over any sacred cows yet? <laughs> so the Lord starts touching her in this way. And then that starts being what's getting brought up for her. The Lord starts talking to her about that. Um, to the point even where during one of the sermons or during one of the ministry times at this conference, the Lord touches her and she's essentially glued to the floor. She cannot get up. Her body's having a hard time moving. The presence of God is touching her. She's getting ministered to. But our group is getting ready to go get lunch. <laughs> and she knows that that's roughly what's happening. She's going, uh, Lord, it would be really nice if I could, you know, even crawl, like do something. And the Lord says, no, you need to ask for help. <laughs> so she sends a group message to our group. And she's like, hey, guys, I don't really want to do this. <laughs> but can some of you guys come and get me and help me? Because I, to use Jacob's terminology, I'm undone right now. And it took myself and then Tommy, can you just wave your hand so people can see? This man does CrossFit like every day. I, I, share, I share that just to say that when we actually get to Janelle, um, Janelle, can you wave your hand again so people can? Janelle is not a large person. <laughs> and I share that to say when we actually get to her and pick her up, it took both myself and Tommy getting underneath her arms to actually try to carry her to where the group was meeting at. And I share that to say, it's, again, I know some of what I'm talking about is making you guys super uncomfortable. Uh, some of what I'm talking about, you guys are like, I don't know about this. I've seen abuses in environments like that. All of that, you know, is very well true. But I would pose to you, for those of you who are a little unsure, um, think about this. You don't counterfeit something that's not valuable. So if you're concerned about, like, is this just flesh? Is this the enemy? Is this distracting? All this other stuff. Um, something for you to consider is that if the enemy were to do that, number one, he's the least creative person to have ever existed. He doesn't make anything new. He only perverts things that God made. So if you were to think, you know, I don't know about this. Like, is this God? What about all this stuff? That means that if the enemy were to counterfeit it, that means that there's a God counterpart to it. So I would challenge you to let that sink in and think about that for a minute. So this is all happening with Janelle. And then um, one of the other things that Janelle was receiving prayer for throughout the week was she'd had different um, just back pain throughout the years. And something that I've seen just after having prayed for a bunch of different people a bunch of different times, um, oftentimes there's an emotional component that's tied into how the Lord wants to heal somebody. Um, one of the easiest ways to look at that is what happens to you when you get really, really stressed out. Neck, shoulders, stomach, your body has a physical reaction to something emotional that's going on. So something that we've seen a lot with people who have chronic lower back pain is they often feel emotionally unsupported. And there's a point in time where they can look back and see, it's like, yep, that was a trauma in my life. That's something that I needed help with. Um, so we're 
this is after the conference, we're at home, we're kind of debriefing all the things that the Lord did. And she's saying, hey, like, I've still got some back pain. Um, and I said, okay, uh, would you say that this is true? Do you feel like you haven't been supported? All this other stuff. She said, yes. That's also sort of what comes along with the territory of, I need to be okay all the time and I have to be able to handle myself all the time. Um, when you set yourself up to not need people, you end up being alone. Say law. So it, we just prayed simple prayers. Say, you know, in the name of Jesus, I break agreement with the lie that I don't need people. And the presence of God comes on her. And what, this is where it actually gets funny. She was only able to bend like maybe this much without pain. As soon as she breaks agreement with that thing, the presence of the Lord comes on her and she's full on. <laughs> and she's not fully aware of what's going on. And so I've, like, I've got my hand on her. I'm like, hey, do you realize that you're like bent further than you said you were able to with pain? She opens her eyes. She's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, so the Lord's doing all this stuff and these people and I'm, I'm personally just getting wrecked watching it happen. Um, I met the Lord in a profound way in an environment like that. There was all this stuff going on that I didn't have a context for, I didn't understand, but it was in that environment, and hear me when I say this, it's in an environment where the Lord is allowed to move and do what he wants to do, not just by our words, but by the attitudes of our hearts, where the Lord's allowed to do what he wants to do and minister to people, that people start encountering Jesus. I encountered Jesus in an environment like that. And I heard this phrase and saw a picture. I saw a picture of a young dad holding his newborn baby boy. And I heard this phrase very clearly in my spirit where the Lord said, I love you. There's nothing you could do to make me love you anymore or love you any less. I wept for four hours. People can see stuff like that and call that hype. They can call that emotionalism. Maybe some of that was there, but I can tell you beyond the shadow of a doubt, the reason I'm standing on this stage today is because of that encounter. And I share that to say I'm hungry to see the Lord move in our body in this way. Now, I need you to hear this part too. Just because I'm saying that doesn't mean I'm saying I'm going to neglect this. Because here's another lie that the enemy is allowed to seep into the church. The lie that he, we have allowed him to throw into the church in general is that you can separate the two. Jesus was both the most wise, the most studied in the scriptures to the point where people who had their equivalent of PhDs came to him and he said, what about this, this, and this? And to paraphrase, their jaws were essentially dropped. How does this man know this stuff? This is a new teaching with authority. And, not, all, not but, and, and the dead were raised. And the lame were healed. And the demon possessed were set free. So I would also pose to us as a body, if we want to actually look like Jesus, it's not either or. It is both and. Well, Aaron, what about different environments, different places I've been in? You know, I've seen people abuse that. I've seen people get weird. Yes, that is true. I would pose to you, though, that the activity of the spirit through the gifts, through God moving sovereignly in ways that I'm describing is actually just as much a discipleship tool that he uses as is things like scripture memory, as is things like meeting and working with each other. Because what's happening in the middle of all of that, stuff's getting brought up to the surface. The Lord's highlighting things. It's one thing to get a little bit uncomfortable because God's doing something you're not used to, but what often happens in these environments is we don't just get uncomfortable, we actually get offended. 
Do you think that the Lord is interested in removing offense from his people's hearts? So this stuff, this activity of the Spirit, when he comes in ways like I'm describing, number one, it's not just ever for one person, it's for a community. And number two, it brings stuff up in our hearts that we get to then bring to Jesus. Because here's the other thing that always ends up happening when we share testimonies. And this probably happened for many of you in this room. And I'm gonna share my wife's testimony here in a minute. You hear testimonies of people getting healed and your first reaction is not, God, I'm so glad that you're moving this way. It's God, why them and not me? Now hear me, I'm not trying to say that waiting for the Lord to move and heal you, waiting years, decades, some of you. I'm not trying to say that that is not hard. I'm not trying to say that your emotions are not valid. But what's oftentimes behind that initial response to the movement of the Holy Spirit in somebody's life is actually an orphan mentality that says, God will always heal and touch somebody else and I'm going to be left behind. And the problem with that is that that is absolutely untrue about who our Father is. I'm not trying to say I have all of the answers. I pray for the sick regularly. I've seen cancer healed. I've lost friends to cancer. And my grandfather currently has cancer metastasized in his body. I don't have answers, but I do know who my God is. I'm going to share this testimony from my wife, and then we're going to pray for each other. Sound good? So um, my wife, Amanda, she was the person playing the keys today. Um, she had, she has had 10 years, just so just about a decade of her hips being misaligned and rotated, noticeable and to the point where it was compounding her back pain issues that she's had for four years. Um, she took a fall when we were uh, in Kona uh, at YWAM, starting to do our missionary training. She took a fall and her back has just kind of not been the same since then. So we're at the last night of this conference and it's, it's the night that is set aside for, you know, we're, if the Lord's wanting to heal people throughout the week, that's awesome. But that night is the night where they're taking special care and attention to say, we will be praying for the sick tonight. So oddly enough, it was one of the few healing services I had ever been in where one of the words of knowledge was not lower back pain, which if you've if you've been in those services, you know that number one, haha, that's funny because that does always get called out. And also, it's interesting because it always gets called out and it wasn't. So, you know, all these, and it's, it, it wasn't even just a few. They had like 40 people get up and share words of knowledge because there's like 1,500 people at this conference. So my wife's sitting down on the floor at that point. People have kind of gone to the various lines and they're receiving prayer. People are starting to get healed around the room. And I'm like, hey, Amanda, like, Let's go. Let's get prayer. Um, and her reaction is she starts crying and she just is shaking her head. Now, those of you who know my wife know that that's not her. My wife has never given up on anything. She doesn't give up on people especially. So for the Lord to be moving, like there, there are literally people standing next to us and people in our group who have gotten healed from injuries that they have had for years. And what comes up in her in that moment is, I'm not doing that. And I did what I needed to do as a husband in that moment where I did not let that go. And she's talking to me. She's like, I, I don't know if I can. And, and these, are, these are the words that are, are coming from her. I, I don't want to be disappointed again. And again, that, that emotion, that feeling, totally valid when you've been praying and receiving prayer for years. And if that ever gets to the point where it leads you to stop pursuing healing 
which the word tells us God has made available to us, if it gets you to the point where you are giving up on yourself, that's when the enemy has come in on top of that. So I'm, I've got her face in my hands and she's crying, I'm crying. I'm just like, Amanda, we need to do this. We need to do this. And she's like, no, no, I'm not doing this. Babe, we need to do it. I'm not doing this. I'm not going down. And that's when I say, okay, at least let the, the 12 people that we brought here that you know pray for you. And she's like, well, yeah, I'll totally let them do that. <laughs> I was like, okay, sure. And so, and it's all of these, all these people who are here today. Um, they start praying. And Amanda, and again, Pastor John talked about this a little bit last week. Some of you have a theology that Christians can't be oppressed by the enemy, that the demonic can't affect Christians. That's fine that you think that. Um, if you actually have a genuine question about that, I'm happy to talk to you about that. But Amanda starts, just to call it for what it is, Amanda starts getting delivered. Stuff starts lifting off of her. And after 30 minutes of that, she gets up and she is completely pain-free, and her hips and back are completely aligned. And um, one of the things that I, the Lord actually had me do in that moment, and this, some of you in here just need to hear this. Um, part of what happened in that deliverance moment with my wife is my, is the Lord told me you need to repent to your wife for being passive about this issue. Because to some degree, and again, I don't pretend to have this all mapped out, but to some degree, I was culpable because I had allowed that thing to sit there unchallenged. I would pray for her, I would step out, and I would do things, but one of the things that, would actually, and it was a breakthrough moment while we were praying, there were several moments where the Lord broke through and hit stuff, that was one of those moments. And along that same line, I would pose this question to us. Why do we make peace with things that God has declared war on? Why do we make peace with things that God has declared war on? One of the things he told his disciples in Matthew 10, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse lepers, freely receive, freely give. He then goes in Matthew 28 and he tells his disciples, teach them the disciples that you are going to make to observe everything I've commanded you. That would include heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, cleanse lepers, freely receive, freely give. And I know having, some of you have, when it comes to pain, when it comes to sickness, some of you have got even decades on top of what my wife was dealing with. But I know what it is to live underneath that. It starts to change the way you think. It starts to change the way you approach life. Um, to the point where even your expectations of the other person begin to shift. We just, and it, it's beautiful how the Lord's just reminding us that that's something that he did and that it's done and dealt with because there's, there's just a ton of these little things that keep coming up. Like we, we just got um, a new, we just got a new bed and a new mattress because the other one was dead and needed to be dealt with. But, <laughs> and how, how many of you guys have gotten a mattress shipped to you? Like it's all rolled up, that whole deal. Those things are heavy. So I'm, I'm there and we're trying to move these boxes and Amanda's able to help me and we have like, our, our master bedroom is upstairs and she's helping me carry this stuff up and she, after we put it down, she just looks at me and she's like, I'm really glad I got healed, otherwise you would've been doing this by yourself. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my gosh, you're so right. Like, and here's, here's why I'm sharing these stories, here's why I'm sharing these testimonies. Uh, in the Hebrew, 
the, the root word that kind of forms testimony carries this sense of sense within itself that says like, God, would you do it again? And here's what's also true about God. He's no respecter of persons. If he's done it for one, he'll do it for you. Now, I know when, I start, when you start saying things like that, the first thing that often comes up is like question, question, doubt, question, all this stuff. And here's the deal. God's very okay with your questions and your doubt. <laughs> he is not intimidated by it. But what I would never want for us to, hap- to happen to us as a body is that we allow our experiences to dictate how we interpret the scripture. Aaron, I know you're saying that, like I see it in the word, Jesus, you know, we're supposed to pray for the sick, we're supposed to do all this stuff, like, and even in church history, we see people get healed. But why, why did my family member pass? Why am I still sick? I don't know. But I do know he told us that we're supposed to go after this. And here's another beautiful dynamic that is in the middle of that. You develop an intimacy with the Lord in the middle of pursuing him in those things that you, in many ways, don't develop in any other way. There's a proverb, there's a proverb that says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and it's the glory of kings to search it out. So when God's inviting you to pursue something that you don't have the answer to, number one, he's not hiding it from you, he's hiding it for you. And number two, it actually speaks to your identity. So this is an invitation for us. This is an invitation for us as a body. For many of you, this is a turning point moment. For many of you, this is a, I've heard this before, I'm going to let this slide and I'm going to not pay attention to it and I'm just going to continue with my day-to-day Christian walk. That's fine and Jesus loves you. Don't hear what I'm not saying because what can often come in on the back end of talks like this is that people can hear if I don't have this experience or if I don't get healed or if I don't get touched and shake and speak in tongues and do the whole thing, if I don't have that experience then I'm less than. That's a lie. Let me put that out right now very clearly. That's a lie and that is not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that it would be ludicrous to worship an infinite God and to expect that we have experienced the fullness of it already. I want Jesus. Everything he has. Do you know what one of the first declarations about the Messiah in the New Testament was? John's baptizing people for repentance in water. And he says, I'm I'm not the Messiah that you're looking for, but there's one coming after me. There's one coming after me whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with fire and in the Holy Spirit. We oftentimes, when it comes to healing and encounters with the Lord, we think that we have to essentially buy it, if I'm going to be perfectly honest. I have to fast enough. I have to have had a good enough week without sinning. I have to have done all this stuff. Praise God that Jesus is actually, it's tied into his nature. It is his nature. He declared of himself, I'm the one who baptizes in fire and in the Holy Spirit. There are things we can do to partner with him. That's true. But this was never about you. This was never about what you could work up. This was never about what you could earn. This is about a God who came in the form of a man and died. And he said, it's better for you that I go. It is actually better for you that I go so that I can send the promise of my father. So that I can send the Holy Spirit. Most of us, if we were given the option, we'd say, I'd rather have Jesus in the flesh right here. And that tells me that we don't have a clue about who's living inside of us. 
again, we believe Jesus is God, yes? So he cannot lie. He said, it's better that I go. It is actually right now with what I'm doing on the earth, better that I am not here so that the Father can send the Holy Spirit. So we're going to take some time. I didn't plan on talking this long, but I think it was helpful. Hopefully it was. We're just going to take some time to pray for each other and minister. So um, at least uh, Amanda and Jacob, if you guys could come up. Um, So here's what we're going to do. Um, uh, All of my friends from Firestarters, could you guys stand up? Um, I'm having them do this uh, because I did invite them to pray with us today. Um, So if everybody, you could just take a look and see who this is. I'm doing this so that you guys know that if any of these guys come to you to pray for you, they are safe people. Uh, They are with us. Um, So we're we're good. We're good there. Okay. Um, If you guys can uh, come down and then rock prayer team, if you could come up as well. Um, And also any any elders, if you're here, we'd love to have you um, be here to pray as well. Um, So just what we're going to do now is I'm just going to pray and I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to come. I'm not going to hype this up. I'm not looking for hype. I'm not looking for show. Like if the Lord touches you, that's awesome. If you're sitting there and it doesn't feel like anything's happened, that's also totally fine. There's no hierarchy when it comes to this. All right. So I'm just going to pray. We're going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to ask him to come. And then what we're going to do is first, we're going to actually ask that the people who you feel the Lord touching you, and that could be in your heart and your emotions, that could be physically, you could feel heat, you could feel wind, you could feel electricity. Um, There could just be this thing in your heart. Um, John Wesley, when he had a similar experience, the, the verbiage he used was, my heart was strangely warmed. It could be that experience, but... I'm going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come. And for those of you who you feel the Lord touching you, I'm just going to ask you as soon as you feel it to come down and our team is going to pray for you. All we're going to do is just bless Holy Spirit what you're doing. And what happens in these moments is we just believe, again, Jesus is the baptizer in the Holy Spirit. And he started something in our family. He started something in my, like in my biological family as well. Again, my wife got healed of 10 years worth of issues. So many of these people up here right now have been healed themselves and have seen God heal through them. So all we're doing right now is as we're praying, we're just going to ask that the Holy Spirit would touch you, would fill you, would refresh you. For some of you guys, it's been a long time. That's okay, you're due. (laughs) For some of you guys, this might be the first time. That's okay. All we're doing is making ourselves open to what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Again, I believe, based on what he told me about today, that he wants to minister to his people. So I'm about ready to shut up and get out of his way. (laughs) Um, So if you guys could all stand. And just put yourself in a position to receive. Just take a deep breath. Focus on Jesus. So Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come. God, we invite you to touch bodies, to touch hearts. Father, we thank you for a fresh filling. Jesus, we thank you for a fresh filling for your people today. Come like fire, come like wind. Come with your presence, Holy Spirit. 